Someday in the not too distant future, a piloted glider will make a flight around the world. After circling the Earth, the pilot will control his re-entry and landing at a selected airfield. As the ship descends from the rim of outer space at more than 18,000 miles an hour, the denser atmosphere sets up a glow in the glider's skin, parts of which look like a white-hot poker. To protect the pilot against the rigors of atmospheric re-entry requires the latest developments in aerothermodynamics, heat-resistant metals, rugged structural design with a minimum weight penalty, reliable communications, effective flight controls, and precise guidance. In the end, it takes the cool hand of a skilled pilot to bring his glider in for a conventional landing. This is Dinosaur, a dynamic soaring vehicle. Under this tarpaulin is a full-scale mock-up of the dinosaur glider currently being developed by the United States Air Force. And this is a model of the glider our Air Force test pilots will be flying. Compared to modern aircraft, it isn't especially large. Not for a vehicle that's going as far and as fast as this one. But what we see here represents a major achievement in aerodynamics to design and fabricate a vehicle that will stand up under the punishment a glider like this must undergo calls for the finest know-how we have from drawing board to the actual hardware itself not to mention some first-rate piloting for this dinosaur project puts an emphasis on the pilot on the man the objective of dinosaur is to put a manned maneuverable glider out on the edge of space and fly it back to Earth at will. Follow-on dinosaur vehicles will allow man to perform space missions and return to Earth for a soft re-entry within wide tolerances, landing the winged glider at an airfield of the pilot's choice. The experts have long known and practiced the art of dynamic soaring. When it's properly designed, a glider has remarkable aerodynamic characteristics. And when it's boosted into the air, it returns to Earth safely, even though it is completely unpowered. Of course, the glider's design and configuration are critical if it is to have the desired maneuverability. Reducing the overall weight increases the effectiveness of the booster. Although the concept of dynamic soaring has long been in men's minds, many technical problems had to be licked before we could proceed with confidence. When it comes to working with a man glider, it proves to be quite a trick to combine the glider with a large rocket booster. Once we've launched the glider into space, the problem is to bring it back without it becoming a fireball like this test nose cone photographed as it re-entered the atmosphere from a ballistic trajectory. A manned glider can ease into the atmosphere. The pilot glides using the dynamic energy built up during launch. The art of staying in his flight corridor, making a carefully controlled letdown at hypersonic speeds with regard for changing air density and glider lift is called dynamic soaring, hence the name dinosaur. In 1958, the Air Force, after consideration of several design and feasibility studies, established the Dinosaur System Program Office at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. A year later, the Boeing Company was selected as system contractor. At the same time, the Martin Company was chosen as associate contractor to supply the rocket boosters. In addition, numerous other contractors throughout the country 
have supporting roles in this historic project. The most important development requirements are in the areas of stability and control and structures and materials technologies. During re-entry, the glider will encounter structural temperatures of several thousands of degrees. Various materials and structural concepts have been successfully tested under simulated re-entry conditions. Since the beginning, a comprehensive wind tunnel program has been underway. Dinosaur wind tunnel tests have occupied every major tunnel facility available throughout the country. Scale models have been subjected to aerodynamic environments similar to those which will be encountered by the glider in actual flight. Tests have been made to determine how intense heat changes the chemical and electrical properties of the atmosphere around the glider, thus affecting communications. Communication equipment and facilities have been developed to make it possible for the pilot to keep in touch with the test controller at all times. Components were subjected to vibration tests, for the vibrational environment created by the powerful booster engines affect the design and development of each and every dinosaur component, from the struts and joints to the most delicate electronic parts. 